The fear of negative evaluation has correlation to language learners' English language proficiency. As foreign in the language themselves, English language students have the mis misconception that when they speak or when they make mistakes while they speak or write something in English, they would become a laughing stock to their peers, which affects their learning habit and attitude towards learning towards their learning the tar in the target language. And this is a sad reality as globalization grows. English has become a permanent language and when someone knows you cannot speak well in, in that language, they will give you the look of disgust or disappointment, which supposedly should not happen. I know that English has been widely used in any circumstance today and anyone can learn about it any time since they are existing online courses there are existing online courses and english materials anywhere in the digital world or realm but we have to remember that english is only one of those tools for communication not an art to be mastered when we think of english as an art we will always think of perfecting our speech which hinders us from listening to the one we speak with because we are so conscious of how we are going to say our response next, which definitely creates inefficient conversation. Moreover, learning anything comes with constant practice of mistakes. If we want to practice something, we never truly master it in a snap. But it takes a challenging process, and that's something that English language learners should keep in mind, as well as those who think they are all-knowing among these learning individuals. Hence, as a future English language teacher, if I were to choose among the previously discussed types of grammar, I would choose descriptive grammar rather than prescriptive grammar. I know how wonderful it feels to become fluent in a language that has social and economical significance, but do people learn it in a day? Particularly when you're a foreign student or someone who speaks, I mean, who do not speak English as their first language? No. So, as a teacher, it's part of my duty to teach and help my students learn English the way English is used by the society. Because, take note, the goal here is to improve their communicative competence and the paramount possession that students could have to efficiently and competently communicate with others is to be able to speak their minds without thinking about others judging them. The same thing in the classroom. When few or most of my students are poor in English proficiency, judging them immediately and pointing out their mistakes wouldn't be useful at all to make them communicatively competent. When one is assured that no one is judging them, their self-confidence is boosted. They would not fear to communicate with others even when they can barely speak English or not fluent in it. Now, watch this next clip that I will show for you to have a clear understanding of what I mean. A while ago, I was in a pharmacy. I had to buy Omega. My doctor said I should get Omega. And I go to the shelf, there's tons of Omega. There's Omega that's high in DHA, Omega that's high in EPA, and I don't know which one to buy. Now the sales rep happened to be there, and I saw she was like this well-dressed professional woman. I walk over to her and I see this look as she sees me, this sort of, it's a look I recognize very well. Her eyes go all wide. It's sort of that panic, oh my God, I've got to speak to a native speaker and she's going to judge me and notice my mistakes. I go up to her and I explain my situation, which, which omega do I get? And she starts explaining to me everything about DHA and EPA you could possibly imagine. She speaks very quickly, goes all around in circles, and when she finishes, no idea what to buy. I'm so I turned to the girl behind the counter. Now the girl behind the counter, I heard her before, her English level is very low. But when I walk over to her, this girl 
There's no fear. In fact, she's just looking at me. You know that look? Like, yeah, okay, so how? Right. <laughs> yeah, I've been in Malaysia a long time. <laughs> So I go up to her and I explain the problem, EPA, DHA. She looks at me and she says, okay, uh, uh, EPA for heart, DHA for brain. Your heart okay or not? <laughs> so I said, yeah, yeah, my, I said my heart is really, it's, I think it's pretty good, she says. Your brain okay or not? <laughs> I said, yeah, no. <laughs> no, my brain is not as good as it used to be. She looked, she said, okay la, you take omega DHA, can? <laughs> Problem solved, right? So we've got two different kinds of communicators. We've got the one who's got a high level, but totally focused on herself and getting it right, and therefore very ineffective. We've got another one low level, totally focused on the person she's talking to and getting a result. Effective. And therein lies the difference. You see, the importance in speaking is not the fluency, but it is the fact that the person can be understood effectively by the people they speak with. A true competence in communication encompasses social linguistic competence, discourse competence, strategic competence, and grammatical competence. Now, if you are going to ask me, grammatical competence, are you sure that you can achieve that if you let your students speak unstructured sentences without correcting them? Well, descriptive, anal descriptive grammar is not correcting i mean does not mean you are not correcting the mistakes of your students it just means you make students comfortable to speak and to be a competent communicator we should have cognitive knowledge about communication based on observation and instruction understand that and we have to understand that and if it i mean we should have understanding of individual, social, and cultural contexts that affect these competence and be able to adapt to those contexts. And yes, some say that communicative competence is just a fancy term for fluency. But fluency comes naturally to people familiar and expert in the language or in the specific knowledge they know. And how do we get familiar and an expert in a language, specifically, specifically for it to us? And that's through practice. And as we practice, do we get to be perfect in that phase? No. We let ourselves commit mistakes because proficiency never comes first when we try to learn something. It comes when we try to learn and do our best while learning it and accept our mistakes and assessing those later on. So with descriptive grammar being non-judgmental, it will be much helpful for students learning foreign language to start speaking the language in any way they want as long as they're genuine to their words rather than becoming the people or a person who look after perfection of grammar so much that they wouldn't be able to afford listening to others' words. And as a future language teacher, I want to make my students think that language doesn't need to be perfect. I will allow them to speak their hearts regardless how ungrammatical it is. Because that's where everyone starts through continuous practice. And as an English language teacher, I know how gra grammatical errors sound irritating. But we also have to remember that these students are here to learn, not to be judged. And we, as language teachers, exist because we are teaching students how to efficiently communicate, not only by verbal language, but as well as nonverbal language, which denotes that communicative competence is more than fluency of a language. It is achieved through knowing how to understand, listen, and communicate to people with the right attitude and authenticity.